Okay, any other problems with Compose that come to mind? I know that you are not a fan of the navigation library, right? Oh man, oh man, that's a fun topic. Okay, yes, that's one way to put it. I am not a fan of navigation Compose. In fact, I admire what they are trying to achieve in the sense that uh, they want to create the framework that manages lifecycle owners, Umodel store owners, safe state registry owners, and all that stuff without fragments that encapsulate them and act as this thing, right? Like this is the end goal. The goal is to swap out fragments with novpack stack entries. So as long as the novpack stack entry can do anything that the fragments can do, they can act as a replacement. So as such, the most important things that Navigation Compose is currently doing internally, which is actually something that makes perfect sense if you're trying to create something that interrupts with Jetpack and its architectural components, is uh, setting up the local view model store owner and the local safe state registry owner and the local lifecycle owner to be the novpack stack entry of the current destination that is being rendered on the screen, right? Like, th that's what it does. And that's great. I wish that it had an API that was type safe, <laughs> but it doesn't. I'm not sure why. Like you, you had navigation originally, like Jetpack navigation. They had SafeArx. SafeArx had problems. SafeArx, SafeArx had very notable problems, which. Uh, I guess I will explain now, there were two of them. One of them is that you couldn't define a set of parameters that you would include in one argument list and on other argument list. So what you needed to do for SafeArx to work is define the arguments on both the action that navigates from A to B, and you needed to define it on the receiver side that is B, so that the, it can receive arguments that are coming from the action. And what's even worse is that if B was a star destination of a nested nav graph, then you also had to define these arguments on the navigation tag as well, so that it would be able to delegate it from the navbex stack entries arguments to the fragments arguments. So you defined the same set of arguments three times, three times with strings. And if any of them have a mismatch, it won't fail. What it will do is just give you nulls. And that's not that great. Like imagine that you have to like explicitly remember, oh yeah, this this string here, it has to be an exact match as this other one. And you cannot extract, well, technically you can, you can put in your strings XML or somewhere and then refer to the string per se, but you still cannot uh, include the type. The type has to match. And if you change it in one place, you have to change it in all three places. And if you navigate to this screen from another, action like another fragment and another action then you have to pass you have to define it there too so you duplicate the same list of arguments as many times as you navigate to something but but we are talking <laughs> uh, still safe about parts. fragments or about this is still components. the fragment version but, um, so um, uh, we will we'll get to navigation compose okay yeah, but i'm not sure if i can follow you because how i remember it was you were uh, added the arguments to the to the destination in yes. xml and then when you, you used it, needed it on the action and then you used the generated code but the generated yes. code then automatically had these parameters for, yes. from the arguments yes, you were, you were that you declared. defined in xml which you but this was just one at least two places because you had to define it on the receiver side and you had to define it on an action if you were using an action to navigate which you probably are <laughs> Because in order to have the correct animations, you needed an action which defined the pop and push. Is it push? Uh, pop, enter, and pop, exit. That's the one. And enter and exit. So these four animation parameters. So you were using action to navigate from a fragment to fragment, but then you needed to define these arguments in these two places. And as such, it took a bit of time. So like, not it's not the matter of time. The problem is the duplication. But this is SafeArts, this is the fragment world, the XML navigation world. So this is the original thing where we had some semblance of type safety. And then one thing that it still had, SafeArts was able to pass parcelable and serializable arguments and then mm. and arrays, as long as you defined it with a fully qualified name. And if you enabled ProGuard and you didn't keep the name of parcelable objects, then it would crash in release mode. So that's great. This is something I heard the other day, I was like, 
wait, really? And yeah, really, because it uses class.for name to load it. And we can't send parsable and compose anymore. Yes, with navigation compose, they were like, you know what people really liked? Uh, being able to pass objects. You know what we shouldn't support at all ever as a concept in navigation compose for some reason? Passing objects. No, I read their reasoning about this and um, I think what I want to encourage is that you just send the ID of an object, right? And not the whole thing because it's, um, I guess it's more efficient, faster. I, I'm not sure what what's bad about passing. and, But okay, one downside maybe of passing an object instead of the ID is that you, uh, that you have data that's then not observed, but just the static data that you sent over. But maybe sometimes this is exactly what you want. But if you want to get an object and then observe the changes in it, then you need the idea anyway and retrieve that from room or whatever you are getting it from. But yeah, I think they want to encourage sending the idea, right? And not the whole object. But what do you think about that? I think exactly what you said. So there's a lot of times, especially when you have a local DB, it's in the database, it can be updated from the remote data store if it it's a thing like API, you save it and it can change underneath you and you want to show the up-to-date view, which makes perfect sense. in Like a, a detail read. screen. Yeah, like a detail screen. Like if it's a read-only screen, then obviously you don't want to send this object, have this, uh, have this copy that's like completely unbound from the local data store and instead you would have this in-memory copy that is no longer updated in any way. But sometimes you do want this. But sometimes you do want this. And in that case, navigation compose tells you, yeah, you cannot do that because on the web you have a URL string. So we thought that's a great inspiration for Android, which is not a web app. That's practically the reasoning here. What about size constraints? Is it maybe possible that these objects can become too big to send between screens? Or is okay, it not so an that's issue? why this is funny, actually. This is why it's super funny to me, actually, because... The fact that you cannot send a parsable or a serializable, which is a byte representation, like a binary stream representation of your data in some serialization format, that doesn't mean that I cannot do this with strings, you know? Like, I can literally grab my Turn it into a JSON. Turn it into a JSON yeah. or a protobuf or anything, really. Right. Throw it into the URL encoder and then append it to the query string. I'm like, this is my object, let's go. And I send this huge JSON as part yeah, of the But I can string. discourage it maybe by making it not so simple to do. Okay, but it's not actually a problem. Like yeah. it's a problem if you have this thing that you want to update in cases where you don't, what do you do? There are two things, there are three things you can do. You can either do this JSON trick, <laughs> which is great in the sense that I would hate it. I would hate myself if I had to write this down. Another option is to like decompose the actual arguments of this uh, thing, this object, and be like up and name, mm. up and title, yeah. up and blah, 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 and, 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 and. But it falls apart when you have a list. If you have like something that's like a four element list, serializable would be able to handle this, but like with this, then you end up like, okay, how do I serialize a list? And then you actually invent JSON. <laughs> so at that point, you end up sending JSON. And uh, what was the last one? I'm not even sure. Uh, oh yeah, like y you can actually do pro. Oh yeah, there there are some options. Like you you can like reach into your old pocket of tricks and mm. save it into shared preferences and load it from shared yeah. preferences like a champ. This is what people have been fighting to avoid for years and we are going to get back there because sometimes the ID is just not enough. You want a copy of this thing and you don't want it to update. And instead what you have is that, uh, okay, so this is one thing that parcelables and serializables and enums as enums are no longer supported, but it gets worse. It gets so much worse. <laughs> Because this is just one thing. This is clear functionality loss. And I had an argument on Medium with some guy who was saying that, but the documentation says that it's supported. I'm like, read the code. It's not. It's never going to be supported. It's intentionally not supported. So let's see what people will think when they realize that it is intentionally not supported. Because you often hear this. They often tell you, it's alpha. It will be added. It will not be added ever. <laughs> 
<laughs> so you're not a fan of not being able to send parcelable objects. There are times when it's extremely convenient in the sense that it's exactly what I need and now you cannot do it without serializing to JSON and then escaping it. And the what? problem <laughs> and the problem from just getting it from the database again is that it's then asynchronous and needs a moment. Yes, right? it's asynchronous. So now you need to consider that it takes time and sometimes hmm. you don't have that time. That's why you want to send the copy. In some cases, you want to like send the copy, initialize it, and still load it from the database afterwards. This is something you can do sometimes. Yeah, an edit screen usually, right? Where you do, in, On an edit screen, when you type something in, you don't want live updates because you don't want to change what you typed already in because the database changed. I, I, at least, I think so. Yeah, that's, that's the simple way to solve that issue. Navigation Compose, this is just one thing. Like, this is just extremely clear functionality loss. You had this ability, it was type safe, kind of. Well, it was, uh, you, you needed ProGuard rules to make it work in production, but it was still possible. Now it's no longer possible, but that's not my major issue with navigation. Compose. Just one, one thing, if people want to see uh, what we have been talking about, then they can watch on YouTube my MVVM to-do list tutorial, because there we do exactly that, if I remember correctly. We sent over a possible object to an edit screen so that we uh, synchronously get the data that we want to edit and we don't have to go into the database and look it up from the ID again. Just so if people want to check it out, I will put a link to this tutorial into the show notes. Yeah, because uh, you can actually pass this parsable object, use it as initial parameters for your safe state handle, get live data, and then you pass it to this initial string from this object you got as arguments, for example, and then it you, you don't need to care about it anymore because it's initialized correctly and afterwards you will still not have it overridden from the database and this is sometimes what you want yes um but navigation compose it has a significantly bigger problem than that <laughs> which is having to pass strings to navigate to a destination and you manually need to define this url this URL string, and then you have to remember, you have to remember what the parameters are, what they are called. And the interesting thing is that when you're passing them in, you have to convert them to string, but you also configure it so that when they wanna extract it into a bundle, which is not a type safe thing, it's a dynamically typed map, right? And you need to know what they are extracting the string as when you are retrieving it. So you define that, uh, okay, so when I pass you this string. You mean this long type and, and this. Uh, yeah, the long type, in type, yeah. nav type, stuff like that. They're used to par parcelable type, but it explodes with an exception as we know. So that thing, yes, you, you technically instruct navigation compose as to how it should decipher this string that you concatenated together and this particular argument in the string so that they can put it into yet another not type safe thing called a bundle. So <clears throat> unlike in the case of multi-activity navigation, even though I like single activity and all that, even in the world of multi-activity navigation, when you had these uh, new intent functions where you had to pass in the arguments as like string, int, all that, you called bundle.put string and you put in the string, it was expecting a string. You were not able to pass in a string as an int and vice versa. You had to pass it in with the right type. This is no longer the case. You need to serialize the string and you need to hope for the best. And it's amazing because if your string, okay, I need to add, add this to this line because if your string has an end symbol and you forget to URL encode it, then it's gonna break your par parameter uh, deserialization within navigation. You manually need to remember that the string concatenation that you do, everything needs to be URL encoded because this is a URL. If it had an AMP, like an AND symbol, it breaks your parameters, okay? <laughs> It's madness that this is something you need to care about. And this will crash your app if you define these arguments wrongly with the wrong type. Well, it will either crash or like half of the string will go missing. And mm. <laughs> but I mean, if you were if you were pass the wrong of these type, I don't know how to call them. These long type and in type, these arguments that define the type of the argument, 
you can just pass the wrong one and it will compile, but then later crash. Is that correct? Well, yeah, <clears throat> like you would, uh, yeah, you would concatenate a long as a string, but mm. you define it as int type. So you want to get it with get int and it would explode at runtime saying that this is bigger than int max. <laughs> yeah, I think I had the problem that I wanted to pass. I changed the ID of my uh, objects from ID to long. And I think then it also crashed because I extracted because it as it an int. Because it was no longer, no longer an int. It was a long. Yeah, yeah. Right. This is what it means that this is not type safe at all. This is the opposite of type safe. Like safers was better. Like safers had problems. This is worse. <laughs> yeah, I found safers nice, but I think I don't use it as advanced and as elaborately as you did, because for me it worked pretty well in fragments. Because yeah, we had these generated methods, right, where you where it had where the arguments had the correct type that it expected, and this gave you compile time safety. Well, it kinda did, right? Because your string keys had to match, and the types had to match on both the sender and the receiver side, so it was kinda compile time safe. <laughs>